Hey everybody, welcome to a video about loops. Uh, and now loops are one of the most kind of computational sorts of things that we get to do in programs. They're sort of a very computery thing, uh, which is that they leverage this ability of computers to do repetitive things without, I guess, getting bored, right? That's a superpower that computers have is that they can just be repetitive and they, they don't get upset about it. Uh, and if you do that at a big enough scale or you sort of point it in the right direction, that ability of a computer to just repetitively do the same work over and over again uh, can be a very useful and powerful thing in our programs. Um, and to do that, we need to talk about these things called loops. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about. So let's go and look at a program and let's begin uh, by deciding to do something that involves repetition, which is drawing a caterpillar, of course. So let's write a quick little program uh, to start working on drawing a caterpillar. So we're going to have an object that's going to contain some basic information about our caterpillar, starts at a position of 100 to 50, uh, and each segment of its body is going to be 50 pixels uh, in diameter. Uh, we need to obviously create a canvas uh, in order to see anything take place. And then we're going to need to do some stuff in draw, um, like fill the background. I'm going to set no stroke for attractiveness. And I'm also going to set a fill that's kind of a green for aesthetics as well. And then we get to this point uh, in our draw loop where we want to draw the caterpillar. So let's say that we want to draw uh, a five segment caterpillar. So what we would do is we would draw an ellipse because each segment is going to be an ellipse. And the first one we would draw presumably at caterpillar x, caterpillar y. Uh, and we would use caterpillar.segment size uh, here. And that would draw the first segment of our caterpillar on the screen, right? So if we go back and look in the browser, a very short caterpillar has appeared. Um, looks a lot like a ball, um, but we know that this is a caterpillar. So this is where repetition comes in, right? Because I said I wanted to draw a five segment caterpillar. So I'm gonna to need to repeat this idea of drawing a segment five times. So if I just repeat this idea of drawing a segment uh, another time, we're gonna draw another segment, so another ball, uh, but we don't wanna draw it in exactly the same position as the previous one. We wanna draw it slightly to the right of the previous one. So I'm gonna add 40 pixels to the position of this second uh, segment. And if we go and look at that, then we see that we have two segments, a two segment caterpillar, super cute. Uh, we could stop there, but we did say that we wanted five segments. So this is the repetition thing, right? We draw a segment, then we draw another segment that is next to that segment, then we draw another segment that is next to the previous segment. So we increase this amount we're adding by another 40, so it moves to the right again. Then we draw another segment, repeating ourselves once more, put that one to the right of the previous one, and then we draw one more, because now we're up to five. That one goes at 160, another 40. And then we've drawn five segments. We've done the same thing, draw a segment, 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 five times. And that yields what looks like a caterpillar, exactly. I mean, it looks like a pot of peas as well, but we're calling it a caterpillar. So let's, uh, let's say that that's what it is. Okay, so this is an example of some code in my program that is very repetitive. And it felt repetitive while I was writing it down, right? And you can just look at it and you can see how similar each of those lines of code is. It really is repeating myself. And in fact, we can make this even more obvious, um, and this is something that I owe uh, to Daniel Schiffman, if we just add a variable uh, in here. So if we were to add a variable, we'll call it x, uh, that keeps track of where we're gonna draw the next segment. So at the beginning, x is gonna be set to the position of the caterpillar, and we're just gonna get rid of all of these segments and we'll start again. So we would then draw our first ellipse at the position x and then caterpillar y, caterpillar segment size. So the very first one is gonna be, again, it's gonna be drawn at caterpillar x. So we're back to our one segment. Now, what do we need to do after this? Well, we need to make x move along to the right so that we can draw the next segment in the correct place. So we could say x equals x plus 40. So it goes up by 40 and then we draw another ellipse at x because we've just increased x and we draw it at caterpillar, etc. All of those things again. So 
Now with added 42x, we can draw the next segment. And there it is. So if I'm a computer now, and I'm trying to think about this very literally, what information do I have here? Well, I know where I want to start drawing my caterpillar. And me, Pippin, the computer, I know how many of these segments I want to draw, which is I want to draw five. And I know how many I have drawn. I've drawn two because I can see them here. So I've got more segments to draw. So I'm going to keep going. So there we go. I'm going to draw another one. I'm just going to cut and paste. Who can be bothered to type these things in? So now I have three, right? And three is still not enough. I said I wanted five. So I'm going to draw another one by pasting in another couple of lines of these things. Now I've got four. I can see there are four ellipses. So I need one more. Now I've got five and now I can stop, right? I can stop repeating myself uh, because I've drawn five of these circles each one 40 pixels to the right of the previous one. So if I save that and go and look, then we have our five, uh, five circles uh, all linked together, making a sort of a caterpillar. We're calling it a caterpillar. Let's not get too picky. Now, the good thing about writing it out this way uh, is it's much more kind of computery. Um, we're able to talk about it as if we are a computer. But maybe more importantly, you can see exactly how, in fact, writing this kind of code is not just a bit repetitive, it is perfectly repetitive. This line here of drawing an ellipse at x, caterpillar y, caterpillar segment size, and then adding 40 to x is exactly the same as this line, exactly the same as this, exactly the same as this, and then we have one more ellipse which is exactly the same as all of the other ellipses. So this is perfectly repetitive. And all I really want to do, or what I would like to be able to say is just do that five times. Don't bother me about the details. Do it five times. And this is what we can tell a computer to do uh, by using loops, because this is something that computers are very good at. Um, and so what we really need, more than anything else, is just the language that says, hey, I want to draw, let's say, five of these segments. I want to add 40 to the x position in between each one that you draw, and I want you to just go away and do that five times. And uh, Don't ask me any questions. Um, and so what we have in programming is the, are these things called loops that allow us to do exactly this kind of repetitive task, okay? Um, and there are two kinds of loops that we're going to talk about. The first one, I think, which is easiest to understand is called a while loop. And a while loop is actually a lot like an if statement. So we know that an if statement will do something uh, if its condition is true. And it'll just do it one time and then the program will continue, right? Well, a while loop is exactly the same idea except that while its condition is true, it keeps doing the thing inside its code block. And that's what we're going to use to draw our caterpillar um, in an even better fashion. So thinking about, again, this back when I was the computer, back when Pippin was the computer and I was doing all of this stuff, uh, there were a few different things that you needed to know in order to do this kind of repetition successfully. So the first kind of thing that we needed to know was like, where are we beginning from? What's the kind of, what is the situation before we start repeatedly drawing ellipses. And the situation is that we know that we haven't drawn uh, any ellipses, right? That's important. So when we're at this point in our program, we haven't drawn anything yet. We know how many we want to draw, because I said we wanted to draw five, right? Uh, and we know where to start drawing them, uh, because we know what x is in the beginning. So this is kind of the starting conditions that we need to know about. Um, then while we're actually in the process of drawing all of these ellipses, we need to know for how long we should keep going. So when do, I, when do I stop is another way of asking this. And I knew that I was going to keep drawing ellipses until I had drawn the five that I said I would draw, until I had drawn the total number that I wanted. So I hadn't drawn it after these three, I hadn't drawn it after these four, but once I drew, drew the fifth one, that's when I knew I could stop because I'd drawn the number that I said I would draw. Um, and then the other thing that's maybe too obvious, but you do need to know, just like in an if statement, you have your action that you're going to take. In a loop, you also have to take some kind of action. Um, and so what is the thing that I'm repeating? Well, I'm repeatedly drawing the actual segment itself. I'm increasing the position that I should draw the next segment at. And I guess secretly, I'm also taking note like, okay, I drew a segment. So now that I know that I've got one, and then now I know I've got two, now I know I've got three, four, and five. And that's the reason that I stop is because I hit five. Okay, so quite a lot to think about there. Um, let's ch change this program into using a while loop. Okay, so let's think about this. I know that I want to start at x, but I also know that I want to draw five segments. And unlike you know me as a human knowing that I want to do that, in a program I need to say explicitly that I need to do that. So I'm going to make a, 
a variable and I'm going to say um, num segments. So how many segments do I want to draw? I want to draw five. So unlike uh, with a human where I just know this, in a program I have to explicitly say this is how many of these segments I actually want to draw. Okay, now that being established, I can now also, oh sorry, and because we're a dumb computer, I should say, I also want to have a variable that tells me how many I have actually drawn. So segments drawn. So how many have I drawn at the very beginning? This is something that I need to know. I've drawn zero. So these are the three pieces of information I talked about needing to know. Where am I going to start drawing? That's x. How many segments am I going to draw? That's num segments, and it's five. And how many have I drawn at the beginning? That's zero. The reason I need this in a variable is because I'm going to change this as I draw each segment, right? That's how I'm going to keep track of how many I've actually drawn. All right, so we're ready to now see what a while loop is like. And a while loop, like I said, it's just like an if statement. So we write the word, word while. That's the thing that lets us know it's a loop. And then, just like an if statement, we have these parentheses, and this is where the condition is put. And then after those parentheses, we have uh, where we're going to take our action. Right In here, inside the while uh, loops uh, parentheses, this is the condition that while it's true, while it's true, we're going to keep doing whatever code is in here. So I said that I was going to keep going while the number of segments I have drawn uh, is not the number of segments that I need. So while the number of segments I've drawn, which we keep track of in the variable called segments drawn, is less than the number of segments that I want to draw. Um, so while segments drawn is less than the number of segments, I need to keep drawing ellipses. This is, this is the condition. Now, how do I do that? Well, I need to draw an ellipse. So this is this piece of code that we had down here. I need to draw an ellipse at position x. So that takes care of drawing the ellipse. I also need to increase x by 40 because I know that I want to draw the next segment 40 to the right. So I need to increase x. And very, very importantly, because I'm keeping track of how many segments I've drawn, and because that is the thing that tells my while loop how long to keep going, uh, I also need to increase segments drawn at this point um, by one, because I just drew one. Okay, I'm just going to delete these other ellipses so that the while loop is all that we have here. So now we have uh, what should be, unless I've made a mistake, totally possible, we have a while loop that will draw our five ellipses. So it says we set up our information, so where should we start drawing, how many should we draw, and how many have we drawn, how do we keep track of how many we've been drawing. And then our while loop says while the number that we've drawn is less than the number that we want to draw, we should do the following things. These are our actions. Draw, the, draw an ellipse at the current position, increase our x position by 40 so that the next one can be drawn 40 pixels to the right, and Take note, you know, do some bookkeeping. Remember that we just drew one, so increase segments drawn by one. That's so important because we need this number, segments drawn, to keep going up so that eventually this condition here becomes false and the while loop stops. So segments drawn starts at zero. We draw the first ellipse, so it goes up to one, then two, then three, then four, and then five. And when it's five, then num segments is not less than. Uh, sorry, segments drawn is five, it's not less than num segments because they're both five, and so the while loop can finish, and that's, you know, just like I knew when to stop because I saw that we had five ellipses, that's how the while loop knows how to stop. So let's double check that this actually works. Five ellipses. Perfect. So the while loop does work. So this is the way that we can condense those ideas uh, that we had about sort of these instincts that we had about what it is that we're doing when we do something repetitive as humans, this is how we can translate those ideas into something that the computer understands. And the absolute beauty of this, right, is that now that we've got this special piece of code here, it doesn't actually need to, it doesn't rely on knowing how many segments it's supposed to draw. This is just a recipe for how to keep drawing segments until you've drawn enough. So for instance, if I change num segments uh, to six, and save that and go over. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now there are six. If I change it to 10, now there are 10. Um, it's a very, very big pot of peas or a nice long caterpillar. Uh, and if I change it to 1,000, well, we can't see 1,000 because they're going off the side of the canvas, right? But in fact, it is drawing 1,000. It's very, very happy to draw 1,000 of these things one after the next. 
Um, if I really, really wanted to see more of the 1000, I could, for example, change the segment size to be much smaller. So if I make the segment size 5 maybe, and I make x 0 maybe, so that it starts on the far uh, left. Now, oh, and so you can see they're all quite spaced out still, and that's because in my code I'm still adding 40, um, whereas I've reduced it by 10, so I'll add 4 in between each segment. Now you can see very, very small, but you can see all of these little segments moving across the screen. Um, because we've just changed some numbers. But the most important thing is, you know, this basic idea here, this while loop, which is really relying on this condition, while the number of segments I've drawn is less than the number of segments I need to draw, do this stuff. And one of the things that we do is keep track of like, okay, I drew one more, I drew one more, I drew one more. It doesn't matter how many segments it needs to draw, it's always going to draw enough. I was always going to draw exactly the number that we ask it to. So I'm just going to go back to where we were before, so with 10 segments, let's say. So that's the power of loops, right? It can just repeat uh, for as long as we want it to. Now, adding one is a thing. I'm just looking at my notes there. Uh, you can see in here inside this loop, one of the big things that we very, very often do in these loops is that effectively what our loop is doing is just counting, right? All that it's really doing is counting for as well segments drawn goes up by one each time until it reaches number of segments. So it's just counting zero, one, two, three, four, five, stop, right? That's what it's doing. Or in this case, 10, sorry. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, stop. Um, and to do that kind of loop, we always end up with this variable where we're adding one to the variable. Segments drawn equals segments drawn plus one. Um, so just as a sidebar, we know that we could abbreviate this by saying segments drawn plus equals one. And that would make segments drawn go up by one. Um, that's a slightly more efficient way to write it. You don't have to write it that way, you just can. Um, but one thing that I wanted to introduce here that is um, important to know is that we can also write this idea of increasing a variable by one by writing this, segments drawn plus plus. And that is exactly the same thing. It's saying take that variable, segments drawn, and increase it by exactly one, only one. Um, there is also segments drawn minus minus. There's also minus minus. Um, but here, obviously, we want segments drawn to go up because it's keeping track of uh, how many to draw. Um, so that's just a little sidebar, because you'll see this plus plus thing quite a lot. That's actually why C++ is called C++, actually, the programming language, um, because it's like C, but it's like one better or something like that. Um, one thing that it's really important to take note of, um, that's kind of obvious uh, when you look at it, but maybe it, it can become counterintuitive if you don't uh, just think about it for a moment. So here we're drawing 10 segments um, of our caterpillar, right? Um, and all 10 segments appear at the same time, every frame. So it's really, really important to realize that this while loop here, we have to think about this as happening all at once. It happens inside a single frame. Uh, we don't see it animated, right? We don't see each segment appear one after the next on the screen. We see them all appear uh, at once. So that's just, a, that's just a thing to keep in your mind, right? A while loop, you've got to think about it as all happening inside one frame of animation, not across time. Um, it's true that it does take time, like any, anything in a computer, it's still taking time, it's just it's super duper fast. Um, but for our, for our purposes and for programming purposes most of the time, uh, we should really just think about the while loop is happening like right away, um, as if it takes no time at all, okay? So just don't expect it to animate um, is really the key there. Um, so the key thing really uh, to talk about after this, so we've got a while loop. We know that we set up some initial conditions that help us kind of know where we're starting from. Then the other important thing is that we have this thing that tells us that we, so we know when to stop or for how long to keep going, the condition of the while loop and its parentheses. And then inside there we need to do, uh, take our actions and one of the most important actions is something that will kind of tick along that will eventually help this condition become false, right? That's really important. If this is not in there, and this, can, this, this thing here can never become false, then this while loop is just going to run forever and our program will actually freeze. Okay? Now, we've seen while loops. So while loops are great. You can use while loops for any kind of loop that you want. They're very flexible. Um, and the particular kind of while loop that we're looking at though is about counting. Right? It's counting, in this case, from 0 up to 10. Um, and that is easily the most common kind of loop, is just counting and doing something a set number of times. I like drawing segments of a caterpillar. Uh, because it's so common, there is a special kind of loop called a for loop that we use to do exactly this situation, okay? Exactly the situation where we want to just count. We just want to do something a set number of times. 
Um, and so I'm just going to write the for loop version uh, of this here. Okay. So let's we'll start it. So we'll assume that we've got this let x equals caterpillar x, um, and let's just write it again. So we would need to know where we're going to draw our, our thing, um, and we would need to know how many segments we are wanting are wanting to draw because those are just two things that you have to know. Sorry, num segments. And I'm obviously I'm aware. Let me comment this out actually so that we can't see it. That's command forward slash, by the way. Uh, probably control forward slash on uh, Windows. So those are still, these are two things that we have to know ahead of time. How many are we going to draw? And where do we want to start in this particular case? Because this is about drawing. And then we have a for loop. And for a for loop, we write the word for, as you might imagine. It has the same idea of parentheses. Uh, but in the parentheses, the thing about a for loop is we're going to compress all of those sort of three uh, key ideas. Uh, the idea of a starting up a counter checking whether the counter has uh, reached its limit and increasing the counter. Uh, we're going to compress it all into this one place. So what we're going to say is let segments drawn equals zero. So that's our first bit, right? This was the thing that we set up at the beginning of our while loop that was going to keep track of when we were finished. Uh, here we write it inside the parentheses, let segments drawn equals zero, and we are going to separate it from the next bit with a semicolon. It's super weird that it's a semicolon, but it just is. The next thing that we write is the condition. So this is the thing that checks when we should stop or when we should keep going, depending on how you think about it. So that is segments drawn is less than num segments. So segments drawn we know starts at zero, uh, and we want to keep checking has it reached num segments yet. And then we use another semicolon for the final bit, which is that we want to increase segments drawn each time through this loop. So we write segments drawn plus plus to make it go up by one. So we're kind of and that's this, that's this bit here, right, from inside the while loop. That's the thing that makes the while loop stop. This is the thing that makes the for loop stop as well. So we've got three, the three kind of key ideas uh, from our looping um, concept in here. A starting fact, which is a counter that starts at zero. Something that we check to see if we should keep going, which checks if the counter has reached a maximum value in this case and something that makes the counter change. In this case, it makes the counter go up by one. And this is the most common kind of for loop. It starts at zero, and it counts up by one each time up to some specific number, which is 10 in this case. And then inside, we're going to do the stuff that we did before. Draw an ellipse at position x, caterpillar y, caterpillar segment size, uh, and we're going to increase x by, fifth, by 40, uh, because we still need to do that to, to move it along. And that's our for loop. So it's a little bit smaller, as you can see. It's a tiny bit more efficient, and importantly, it's very, very common. Uh, let's go look at the uh, the code, the running code, just for a moment. You can see it's the same. I mean, it's the same as the while loop, so it's not it's not too surprising. Um, the thing is that using a for loop for this kind of counting situation, we're counting from zero to ten and drawing an ellipse each time and then moving x each time. That is by far the more common way uh, of doing this this kind of counting. Um, also extremely much, much more common uh, is in the for loop, the thing that we use to count, in this case from 0 up to 10, it's almost always called i. So I'm going to replace all of these things with the letter i. I, i, i. Uh, and this now is an absolutely classic for loop. For, then we make a counter called i, it starts at 0, and then we know that while i is less than the number of segments that we need to draw, we do this stuff here, draw an ellipse and increase x by 40, and then i goes up by 1 each time through until eventually the number of, we hit the number of segments. And the for loop, just like the while loop, stops at that point. Okay? Um, this, this kind of loop here is the most common loop you will ever see in your life. i starts at 0, counts up, and goes up by 1 until it's finished uh, because it reaches its, uh, its final number. Okay? And that is what a for loop is. There are other uses of loops that aren't just counting up by one, and while loops in particular can be used in some very creative ways, but the most important kind of loop to get used to uh, and to enjoy, quite frankly, is a loop that counts uh, from zero up uh, to a set number, going up by one each time so that it basically does a task over and over and over again a set number of times. That's an extremely useful thing to get used to. And then as you get more advanced, you can uh, kind of pick up some of the other things that loops can do as well uh, as desired. Okay, so that's loops. It's all just about repeating some special bit of code, whether it's a segment of a caterpillar or something, uh, maybe it's slightly more interesting than that. I had to use a simple example. Um, 
that's it, right? So a while loop is kind of like an if statement that keeps doing the thing, the action inside, until it becomes false. And a for loop is just a really specialized version of a while loop that is based on counting. Um, often, most often, counting in one, increments of one, uh, from zero up to some number that, um, that you've set up for it. Uh, and that's it. So that's loops. That's what we're going to talk about for loops. And I will see you in the next video.